Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is good and clear. Please inform me if you have any difficulty from your side. A Muslim, he posted uh, a video of Shabir Ali, and uh, supposedly the video is approving. If you have any difficulty from your side. Uh, let us move this one here. Supposedly, and uh, I watched a little bit of Shabir Ali a video, which is very funny and very stupid. You know, the, the, the funny about the Muslims, they remind me of a story, uh, a comic story about uh, a hyena uh, and a camel. Uh, the camel was making fun of the hyena, says, look at him, look at you. Your back is not straight. You know, the hyena have like a curve in his back. Uh, but look who is talking. I mean, the camel is making fun of the hyena back. And this is exactly what the Muslims do. So if you go and watch the, the video, I did not uh, delete the link, it's there in the comments. Uh, you will see uh, Shabir Ali. He said, Mark, as an example, uh, he was from the second generation. He was not a direct apostle of Jesus. And most likely, he was an apostle of Peter. Uh, therefore, his Bible should not be accepted. And you know, I ask myself, like, do this guy even he have a like? Do they do the Muslims suffer from mental problem? Let us say, for the sake of argument, regardless if this is true or not, let us say this is a logic that if somebody from second generation he cannot be considered as a reliable source of the words of Jesus, according to the Muslims, not according to me. And this is a picture as it is from the Quran. This is a picture exists in the Arabic Quran as it is printed by Saudi Arabia. It says there that this Mus'haf, not Quran, there's no more Quran. Nobody, nobody have Quran. Today, nobody have Quran. They have a Mus'haf. Mus'haf is pages. Ruwayatu has a Mus'haf. Wa mustalahatu rasmihi wa dabtihi, etc. It says that recitation of this Mus'haf and what is written in it as uh, order and uh, uh, like language uh, uh, performance and the, the number of the verses according to Hafs, according to Asim, according and uh, Abu uh, Abdul Rahman, according uh, Sulma, according to Uthman ibn Affan, according to Ali ibn Talib, according to Zayd ibn Thabit, according to Ibn Ka'ab, according to the Prophet. So here, how many generations we have? The last three names, uh, the last uh, uh, most important names of the recitation of the Quran is uh, we start from, uh, let us say, uh, from Uthman. The Muslim, they say, Uthman. And then we go down, and then we find that uh, uh, Abi Abdul Rahman ibn Abdullah. And then from Abi Abdul Rahman ibn Abdullah, then we find the Asim ibn Najud. And then after Asim ibn Najud, we find that it is Hafs. So now if we count the names, which is the Quran supposedly reported according to, we will find that at least the last three names, they were not exist in the time of Muhammad. And Hafs is the son of Asim as a stepson, which means this is not his real son really, you know, he married his mother, and his mother, she is, you know, she got divorced seven or eight times. And then he, uh, the father, he'd marry her, and then he have a guy or a stepson, his name is Hafs. So the Muslims, they refuse, according to Shabir Ali, if, if a, a book written by second generation, not first-hand witness, this book should not be accepted. Okay, let's do this. This new Quran is refused. Even the Quran, you Muslims, the, Shabir Ali, he read it from it every day, that one is refused. However, Hafs, additional to that, Hafs is reported to be a liar, and we made many videos about that. Hafs is reported to be a, a fraud, a liar, him and his father. Uh, you know, if you remember a few months ago, maybe two months, three months ago, we have uh, uh, we have Titan TV who invited me to be in their show, and uh, we have five or six Muslims, they call me live, 
and none of them could not answer could answer about why the Muslims accuse Hafs to be a fraud the Quran you have today not only is coming not from first generation not second generation not third generation not fourth generation not fifth generation actually the Quran today in the hand of the Muslims nobody knows it's coming from who they claim it's coming from Hafs they claim it's coming from Hafs but the book of Hafs is not exist this is why you see here it says according to the recitation rewire rewire not book so there's no book as long as Shabir Ali and the Abduls they say mark uh, uh, you know uh, there is some historian saying that he was an apostle of Peter and he was not a real witness of Jesus if this is true I will let the Muslims play the game if I go with you Abdul hmm? I'm not saying it's true or not I'm just saying I will go with your game I will go with your lies if this is true and this is the reason not to accept the book of Mark as you claim how you accept the Quran I will tell you why because you are a bunch of hypocrite potatoes you apply rules on others but you don't want to apply it yourself the same as Muhammad he told people don't approach your wives when they have their period and he made a verse in the Quran about it and then we find in the hadith that Muhammad he used to order Aisha to put a sheet between her legs when she is bleeding and the blood is covering his penis I mean what kind of filthy prophet this prophet is so the hypocrisy of Muslims is amazing additional to that Muslims don't have any copy of the book of Hafs I'm not talking about the book of Uthman no Uthman nobody have it this is a lie this is why it says according to Hafs you see if the Muslims have the book according to Uthman then there is no need for Hafs you know what I'm talking about look if I say now okay I have a friend uh, a Christian Prince he said something that he learned from someone his name is George and George he learned from someone his name is Mark and Mark, he learned from someone his name is uh, uh, Joseph, and someone and Joseph learned from someone his name uh, uh, Eli. Uh, so Christian Prince, Christian Prince is not really the one who uh, 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 the source of this. He is just reporting what he heard, and it's not a book. It was it says riwayat to Hazrat Mushab. The recitation of this Mushab. They don't have the book of Hafs, and because they don't have the book of Uthman. And they don't have the book of Muhammad for sure. And there's nothing it's called called the book of Ali. And we cannot find the book, it's called the book of Uthman. And we cannot find the book, it's called Abu Abdul Rahman ibn Habib al Salma. And we cannot find the book, it's called Kitab Asim ibn al Najud. And we cannot find the book, it's called Kitab Hafs. Kitab in, the, in Arabic, it's a, it's a word mean uh, book. So, where is the Quran? What they have is a claim. That this recitation is according to Hafs, according to his daddy, step daddy, according to Abdul Rahman, according to uh, Ibn Habib Sulaiman, according to Uthman, according to Ali, according to Zaid, according to Ibn Ka, uh, uh, according to the Prophet Abi Zamun. So, where is your book? They don't have even a single page of it. If you remember, uh, about a year ago or more, uh, uh, in Birmingham, in England, they found an old document even actually reserved by a Christian priest and the date of the letter goes even to the time before Muhammad but not the ink the Muslim they made a big story about it discovery discovery do you know why they, they were so uh, uh, happy to have the discovery because they don't have a book they don't even have a single document and even that one have nothing to do with the time of Muhammad why it's very easy to discover if you look at the document you will see it's written long after Muhammad by letters or let us say it's a way of writing was not exist in the time of Muhammad for those who do not know the old Arabic in the time of Muhammad don't have dots or valves in the top of the letters and even the type of the letters like the way it's written is different kind of font was not exist in the time of Muhammad so uh, uh, they don't have anything and yet they are complaining about uh, mark mark my friend mark uh, we heard uh, some people saying mark is the uh, he was a, a student uh, of peter okay so how you accept okay well, you know you know what about uh, john what about and you know in, in the top of the, in the end of the day 
all the Muslim accusation is against the Quran. Why? Because the Quran witnessed that there is a three witnesses sent by Jesus. And those witnesses are, one of them is Paul. The stupid Shabir Ali, and you know, I know some of you don't like me to say the word stupid, but I love it because this is fit exactly with the description of the person. You like it, you don't like it, this is not my business. Shabir Ali, once he was debating someone, and he he mentioned that Shabir, uh, 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 Paul, he witnessed that Jesus is God. And uh, he said, yes, I agree that Paul, he witnessed that Jesus is God. But he claimed that none of the apostles of Jesus witnessed that Jesus is God. And he says that in, in that, uh, you know, that Mark is not a uh, first-hand apostle. Okay, what about uh, John? What about, I mean, this, this madness. From the first chapter of John, from the first verse, after after John, he introduced himself, you will see John speaking about the word of God, which is God, which came as in the flesh. And, and, and you say to me, there's nobody who considered Jesus as God. I mean, are you crazy or stupid or what? And if the Muslim want to apply rules, why he don't apply it in himself? Now, the Muslim, they say to us that the Quran is preserved and the Bible is corrupt. You know what? I'm not going to make too much uh, noise about it i want to ask the muslims the bible you are talking about is the bible of who the quran confirmed that allah he gave isa a book whatever you want to call it the quran call it the injil the quran call it the injil okay what is the injil let us say for the sake of argument the christian they love their books how stupid is the one who sent the book and yet he don't consider to reserve it. Why you are blaming the Christians, you stupid Abdul, claiming that their book is not preserved, but yet you cannot provide a preserved book. How is stupid your God that he decide to send the book to Jesus and yet he don't want to protect the book of Jesus? And how is stupid your God to say in the Quran that what does that mean? He sent to you the book of truth, approving what is between his hands. What is between his hands? The Injil and the Torah. I mean, how is how you approve it? You approve a book does not exist. What is between his hands? So it was between his hands. If we go to the from verse, chapter 3, verse number 48. al kitab wal hikmata wa tawrata wal injil. Okay, Allah is teaching Jesus the book, the wisdom, the Torah, and the injil. Okay, what is the book? What is the Torah? What is the injil? This is a question a Muslim, if he have a dignity, should ask his God, not us. I mean, how stupid to you to believe that God, your God, not mine, he send you a book, yet he don't have a copy, a page. You know, if the Muslims, they have a copy of the Bible and they can provide it to us, then we will say, okay, you know what? They have it. Okay, they have it in their hands. Here it is, read it. And Allah will teach him the book and the wisdom and the law and the gospel. Who is this person? That is Jesus. Right? Why he taught him a book is going to be forgotten. What the point of sending Jesus, then you idiot Allah? Where is the book of Moses? What the point of sending Moses? And not only this, the Quran confirmed that Allah he sent the book of Moses after he wrote it by his hands. So what the point of writing the books by your hands? Hmm? What the point of this? If you go in chapter 20, verse number 123, you will see the stupid Allah, which is Muhammad, saying the following, and I want everybody to laugh with me. You will laugh, you know, you cannot hold yourself from laughing if, if you're a Muslim. Read carefully. They say, why does he, uh, does he not bring us a sign from his Lord the people around him, they are, they are asking Muhammad, how come you are you are a, a, a prophet who claimed to be a prophet, but yet you didn't have a miracle? You see, Muhammad did not 
for you. He said, look, has not a clear sign come to them of all that we, former books revelation? Okay, what is the former book revelations? <laughs> in order to say such a statement, then you have to approve books. They have it already in their hands. This is what it says. You are asking them to go and find it in the books which sent to them before. Hmm? Okay, where? Where is the book sent to them before? You just, you uh, all of you, Abdul, you're saying, all oh, those books are gone. So your God, Allah is saying, no, the books are there to the point he's asking people to go and read it. You will see our sign is there. And the funny that Muhammad claimed that the sign of his God in the Torah. <laughs> so his God, he have no sign in the Quran. Huh? If we continue, there's tons of verses, you know, in front of us. We can make a story about each verse on them. In chapter 87, verse number 18, it says, And this is in the books of the earliest revelation. <laughs> and by the way, translation is really horrible. I mean, it is the most, uh, this Yusuf, uh, you know, this guy, he is son, all of them. It doesn't say that. It says, and this is, can be found in the old revelation books. Different translation. Okay. Why he is saying to them, this is in the old written pages or books, if they are not exist. What the point? Stupid talk just to say things. Huh? Most truly, this is in the early scriptures. Okay, where is the early scriptures? You Muslims keep saying, which means your Quran depend on the early scripture to prove itself. Otherwise, how you say this is in the early scriptures, but we cannot find the early scriptures. Why Allah saying this is you can find in the early scriptures if there is none? Guys, are you are you following with me? Do you understand my point? The Quran itself depend according to the Quran on the early scriptures. So where is the early scriptures? How stupid it is to find evidence that the Quran defend itself saying. If you don't believe me, go and read what is written in the early scriptures. And then the Muslim, they say to us, there is no early scripture. That's mean your God, Allah, is a stupid lawyer. Imagine you go to the court and you say to the judge, this is, can be found in the early books. And then the judge, he said, okay, bring us the early book. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> I mean, stupidity sometimes is intelligence. Like, let us stupid then we continue so Ibrahim wa Musa what is this verse is about let us read together and love chapter 87 verse number 19 okay again and this is can be found. This is you will find in the books of Abraham and Musa. Somebody can a Muslim tell me what where we can find the book of Abraham. You see, the Christian they corrupted their book. Okay, we will let that go. The Jews they corrupted their book. We will let that go. I want to see the book of Abraham. And why your God Allah witnessing the books of Abraham and the books of Musa if they are gone? The stupid Muhammad, he is defending his religion, claiming that what he speak of is exists in the book of Moses. This is in the former scrolls. Okay, where we can find the scrolls. That's madness. This is madness and this is stupidity. We continue. <clears throat> if we go in this verse, we 
We will read something funny. Read with me carefully. Chapter 2, verse number 89. Translation of the Abdul. And when there come to them a book from Allah, confirming what is with them. <laughs> confirming what? Confirming what is with them? How clear we can make it more than this, that even your stupid Quran, confirming what is with us, Do you see it? So the Quran was confirming what is with them, but what is with them was fabricated? Shabir Ali, he got a PhD, I know, you know. He left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. Don't refute me, Muslims. Refute your stupid Quran. When I have a debate about two months ago with the Dr. Ruhi from Al Azhar University, Imam Ruhi, he said, Ah, oh, the tafsir of the Quran are made to solve a problem. I agree to solve a problem because Islam is a problem and tafsir is meant to defend because the Quran is stupid and the Quran is exposing the Muslim Islamic religion. So the Muslim they try to play with the meaning, but the meaning is so clear, and this is a translation. It confirms what is with them. Lima ma'ahum. The Arabic is so clear. Lima ma'ahum. What they are possessing in their hands right now. And there is many verses, by the way. If you read the other verses, you will see the Muslim, they play with the translation. But this one is so clear to the point, even the Abdul, all the Abdul, they cannot play with it. Then, when a Muslim he says to me uh, that the Bible is corrupt, I, this 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 is a question I wanna I want everybody of you remember it. When a Muslim he says that to you, ask him: Is the Bible corrupt by Allah's will or against His will? Every single Muslim will say, "By Allah's will." That's it. We are done. Not only that would be a contradiction for what we see in the front of us in the screen in chapter 2, verse number 89, that would be a contradiction for believing that Allah is Almighty God. Obviously, Allah is the devil. Because if the will of Allah to corrupt the Bible, that means Allah is a stupid God. Either he is a stupid God, he sent his book, and he likes it to be corrupt, and he's part of the crime. Or he is actually the one who made the crime. If you remember a uh, few days ago, we were reading something. Let me see if I can find it. Where, where, where? Okay. Hmm. Let us go here. Just to show you that the Muslims, they believe really that Allah is the devil from their own words adam he received from his lord's words adam said oh lord did you not create me uh, with your own hands he said yes who's talking adam asking allah he said which means adam uh, and the blow life into me he said yes he who Allah. He said, which means Adam. And when I sneezed, had you? You said, may Allah grant you his mercy. <laughs> what a stupid story. Doesn't your mercy proceed in your, your anger? Look, look at this little conversation. Adam is a questioning the morality of Allah and the questioning the nature of Allah and saying to him, What's wrong with you? How you grant me peace, you grant me mercy, 
and now you are angry you want to punish me isn't it your mercy proceed your anger he was told by Allah yes Adam said and you this denied me to commit this evil act <laughs> <laughs> what a comedy uh, what the Muslims believe that Allah made a destiny to Adam to commit evil the answer the, this is the question of Adam we have to be honest here did Adam say yes Adam say not Allah yet let us read what Allah answer is so he said to him and you this denied to me to commit this evil act he was told by Allah yes hold on even the sin of Adam, which is the reason for all the prophets to come down so people they might seek forgiveness, it was an evil of Allah, not the evil of Adam. You believe it? And this is written in the books of the stupid Adu. And here we ask ourselves, where is justice? Allah caused Adam to commit evil sin. He not to cause him, he made him. It's a distant, it's this tonight. Read, read. And you this denied me to commit this evil act. Even the even the, the interpretation is which is coming from Muhammad mouth. Remember, this is Muhammad talking here. The interpretation here based on what Muhammad said. And you, otherwise, who is Ibn Kathir to report the story happened between how how Ibn Kathir will, will know? What happened between Adam and what Adam says to Allah? And how Muhammad even will know? I mean, this guy is a mad. He, he fabricates stories. But however, as long as Muhammad said, we have to deal with it. And the Muslims have to deal with it first. And you this denied me to commit this evil. So the Quran witness and Muhammad witness and the Muslim witness in their books and their translation that the evil act of Adam of committing sin was the evil of Allah because this was a destiny not a choice and here we ask ourselves so Allah he made Adam destiny that he would do evil for what so Adam will ask Allah for forgiveness please forgive me Allah forgive me and then Allah will send him down to earth and his children will ask forgiveness to oh, please please forgive us please we want to go back to heaven and then the children of the children will ask for forgiveness. Please, Allah, we are the children of the children of Adam. Husband, we are going for forgiveness. Please, please, please. And then the children of the children of the children of the children of the children, children, generation of generation, they are pleasing Allah, trying to please this filthy, stupid God to send them back to heaven for a sin they did not commit. Because as you see, even the sin of Adam was the sin of Allah. Guys, are you understanding what I'm saying? Who in the who in the chat there is from the listeners don't understand? Anyone don't understand? If there's any Muslim have an objection? If there is any Muslim have an objection, please let me know. You know, uh, because I am a Christian prince. I don't go by Allah knows best. You know, what we say, as you see, we show it in the screen. And the funny, the Muslim, they keep saying to me, Christian prince, the deceiver, Christian, this is your scholars talking, not a Christian prince. The deceiver is Allah. And I can show you tons of verses of Quran witnessing that Allah is nothing but a deceiver. Who is the deceiver? Any Abdul? So here, as long as even the sin of Adam was the destiny of Adam. That's mean those who corrupt the Bible, according to Muslims, was the destiny made by Allah. So who is the one really who corrupt the Bible, according to Muslims? Allah. Are you getting my point? This is how stupid this religion. Then if we go in the Quran, we will find Allah saying, I mean, it's endless stupidity. When I say Allah, I mean Muhammad. Allah doesn't exist. Uh, read with me this verse. Let's find it first. Let's find it in love. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, it's amazing, man. Amazing. This is so good. This is so good. This is so beautiful. Unbelievable. 
All right. Read with me, please. Chapter 5, verse number 44. Quran and Muhammad is the best comedian. It was we. I like it when the Allah says we. That's the Muslim. Why he say we? They say because he's like a king. I mean, so Allah he speak as we because he's one. I mean, this is so he's just trying to copy a language to be to to upgrade himself. Is he going to be like look bad if he say it is me, I? And why other verses says I? Eh? Uh, it's stupid. I mean, but the, 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 the author of Muhammad, he sometimes he say we. It was we who revealed the law of Moses. They're in with guidance and light. Okay, how this light can be exist if it's corrupt? I mean, look like the battery of Moses, or I mean the book of Moses, which is the light of Allah, it turned off certain time. By its standard has been judged the Jews. By the prophet who bought to Allah, will. Allah what? Allah wills. By the rabbis and the doctors of law, for them was entrusted the protection of Allah. Book. What, 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 what? I mean, this is the most dangerous, stupid statement ever someone claimed to be prophet of God, he would say. Allah, he entrusted the rabbi to protect the Torah hmm. we showed you how Muslims believe that everything is by the will of Allah every single Muslim believe in that and the will heal is a will of destiny I know some maybe you might find some naive Christians who have no idea what they are talking about they believe everything is just by God and they will quote for you verses well yeah those are you know like uh, Everything happened by God permission, but God permission doesn't go to details people die people live people get sick God he brought us to this is the will of God God he, he allowed us to exist. He created us and then he punished Adam and his children to live To live a life of surviving life, which means there was struggle That is the will of God but what happened to you? What happened to me? This guy gets sick. This guy gets sick. They asked Jesus about the blind man. Why is a blind man? This is not because he's punished. People they think he's punished or his parents punished. And Muhammad later copied the same statement of Jesus. And the Muslim they claim that Muhammad is being wise. This is the same exact statement of Jesus. But here you will see the stupidity of the author of the Quran when he say that Allah he entrusted the protection of the book to the Jews. And the reason I find this very stupid and very dangerous because this is this line alone is enough to prove Islam to be a false religion. Why? You see, when I say I trusted you and you betray me, and here the trust is about what? I mean, it's not like I'm trying you. I'm tr here I entrusted. It's about I establish a trust already on you. If we go back to the story of the Messiah, you will see that the Messiah, he taught his followers, his disciples, who is going to betray him. And which means the Messiah, he knew it already, who is good and who is bad. Who will betray him? So the trust the Messiah have to his disciple is not a blind trust. He knew exactly what they would do. He knew the future. So we can say there's no really trust. There's a trust only in himself for he is the only true God who don't change. Otherwise, a human, they change. Peter himself, he denied the Messiah. Here Allah, he entrusted the Jews in a job. And what is that job? Is to protect the book of Allah. The second we say in trust, it's mean Allah at that moment, he thought that those people, they are good people and they can be trustworthy. Based on this, Allah cannot be God. Allah, he trusts them to, to, to protect the book, but according to Muslims today, the book is changed. And you know, just uh, like an, an idea came to my head, I remember when the dad was debating a Christian minister who do not know anything about Islam, and that's why they debate them. Uh, he said to him, not even a single Jew, not you cannot find a single Jew believe that God is a trinity. Or God is not one. 
not even one. This what the Yidat said. But the Quran said that the Jews believe that Uzair is the son of Allah. And this is again an example of the stupidity of the Muslims who people, they think they are big scholars, but the fact they are big potatoes. You just destroy the Quran. You just said that not even a single Jew believe in the Trinity. Not even a single Jew believe that God have a son. And then you forgot that the Quran says that Jews believe that God have a son. His name is Uzair. And here is the same story. Allah, he entrusted the Jews to protect the book. Do Allah knew the future? If the Muslim, he say yes, that's mean Allah is a partner of the crime, which means he delivered the book to be corrupted. And if this is true, that's mean it's the fault of Allah. You know, if I give my book to a thief and the thief, he will steal it. I mean, well, well, I know he's a thief and I know he will steal it. And I, I, I refrain from protecting it. It's mean I am part of the crime. If you know there's thieves in your area and you put the keys of your door in the door and uh, what is missing is to put a sign to say here actually here he put a sign he put an I, I this is the keys you, you know they are they are thieves so you give them the key says go and open the door there's nobody there you are you are in charge and what is the accomplish of Allah to let this, this happen I mean what the what the benefit of this isn't it better if Allah he sent books and nobody corrupt them? Why Allah is allowing those books to be corrupted? There's no answer. What the benefit? Just deceiving, playing games? We send the Quran as a guidance, okay? And we send the Bible, the Torah, the Injil as a guidance. How they can be guidance if they are not there? But remember, we showed you where in the other verse it says that he is approving what is in their hand, what they have in their hands. And there's many verses speaking of the same thing. I saw a text of a Muslim, he says, Alhamdulillah, the Quran is preserved. Not even a single verse in the Quran is preserved. And when I say not even a single verse, I mean it. And I change any Muslim to challenge me to prove it. Even Muhammad, just to show you how Islam is, Islam is established. Islam is established on guessing. Because Muslims, they forget everything. And the Muslim today, they have no connection with Muhammad. They don't have the book of Muhammad. The hadith of Muhammad. You see, if we go here, we are reading from Sahih al-Bukhari. Do you know that there's no Sahih al-Bukhari? There's not even a single copy of Sahih al-Bukhari. There is people who claim that al-Bukhari said they don't have their books. Okay, can we find the book of Sahih Muslim? We cannot find it. Not a single copy of Muslim. And the funny, both Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslims are not Arab. According to the history, they are uh, Persian from the big Iran, big Persia. So the all the source they have is based on nothing. And then if we check those sources which the Muslims accept, we will find horrible stories as an example. We know that the Muslims today, they are celebrating Al-Fatr, you know? Uh, sorry, they are celebrating uh, uh, what they call it uh, Adha. Uh, uh, sorry, you know, uh, they, they are celebrating the pagan, the pagan slaughter. Let's just make it simple, you know, the pagan slaughter, which is they celebrate in both uh, uh, occasion Ramadan and uh, after after the Hajj. The pagan slaughter happened for a reason. Because pagan before Islam, they used to slaughter a human being and they used to slaughter animals to give them to gods. Muslims, as a continued pagan, pagan religion, they adopt from other religion some and they adopt from the Christians or the Jews some believe. The Muslim, they believe that Allah, he taught Abraham to slaughter his son. And then Allah, he taught uh, uh, Abraham that I'm going to let you, uh, like, uh, don't kill your son. I will give you a great sacrifice, which means the first one to give sacrifice, it was Allah. And then the Muslim, they tell us that we have a religion with the great details. Everything is explained. And now... Today, we are celebrating a religion as a, they're celebrating what it's called occasion or holiday. 
after going to Hajj and walking around the Hajj, we slaughter millions of animals, and that will make Allah satisfied. But if you think about it, you will find that this is so stupid. Muslims have nothing about the religion. And I will give an example. Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr supposedly is a night when Muhammad here received the Quran, which means it's the most important night in Muhammad's life. Allah Messenger said, He went out to inform the people about the date of the night of the of, of Al Qadr. But there happened a quarrel between two Muslims men. The Prophet said, I came out to inform you about the date of the night of Al Qadr. But as so and so and so, like there's a fight between two guys, huh? It is knowledge was taken away. <laughs> Oh, hold on, hold on. I am a prophet of God, and my God gave me Quran. So in Muhammad now, he don't remember when the Quran was given to him. Okay. Then Allah, he helped Muhammad, and he taught him when the Quran was given to him, which is the night of Al-Qadr. And then Muhammad, in the way, he saw two people are in argument, and he forgot the date. We cannot remember no more. I mean, so what, what, what kind of a prophet we can trust? This is more important than the birthday of Muhammad. This is the most important day in his life. How we can forget this? Even, even such an important thing. You see, we are not asking him to recite a chapter or a verse or a book. We are just telling him what is the date. Even the date he cannot remember. And he claimed that he knew it. I came out to inform you about the date. Which means he know it. How a fight between two guys will make a guy, a prophet of God, forget the date forever. This cult, the pagan cult of Islam, which, which you know, practice of slaughtering animals, and the funny they say to you, like I saw many Muslims in their blogs, they say slaughtering, sacrificing is a is a pagan, and the Christians they are copying from pagan, but you know the, the pagans they sacrifice uh, what they don't like they don't sacrifice themselves, they sacrifice someone else. You will never see any pagan believe it says that you sacrifice God, sacrifice himself. People sacrifice to God. So Christianity is totally the opposite. In Christianity, that God Himself is sacrificing Himself for mankind, and the idea of sacrificing is not really the point. Is not sacrificing. It is the Messiah. He wanted to show us how much He loved everybody. To the point, I say to you, give yourself to save others, and I'm going to show you that I'm the first to do. Not like Muhammad. He used to tell people to go to jihad. Yet he's sitting between the legs of his wives playing uh, shish kebab. Muhammad he forgot and Muhammad cannot remember it and then he says and maybe it was better for you maybe it's better for you not to remember why <laughs> how come the Muslims are so worried about the author how authentic the Bible is but they are not worried about holidays they celebrate they don't know if it's authentic or not so now they celebrate based on maybe Muhammad himself, he is saying, I do not know when. Now look for it in the seventh, in the ninth, and the fifth. Like, what the heck? What seven, nine, fifth? I mean, and how the nine became be between the, the seven and the fifth? I mean, this guy, obviously, he is running out of orders. Of the last ten nights of the month of Ramadan, last ten nights? I mean, do you see how clear the date is? The Hajj, the sacrifice of animals. By the way, sacrifice of animals, you see, the word in Arabic is dahiyya, dahha, adha. Adha is not really what the Muslim they say to you, it's only 
in in the occasion after they do uh, uh, the Hajj and they sacrifice. This is false. Adha is something they practice after Ramadan and they practice after the Hajj. Both they do Adha. Now the most common name they say that one because we break fasting, the break fasting the occasion, and the other one they call it the slaughter. But the fact both of them based on slaughter. However, read with me, Muhammad here how he fabricate rules. Allah messengers observe at the matter, enjoy the Hajj. Okay. He first put an ihram for Umrah and then for Hajj and then offered animal sacrifice. Question why? We why we should do animal sacrifice? Sacrifice to who? The Muslim they say to you, they might say, Oh, we sacrifice so we can feed uh, the poor. You are a poor yourself. This is enforcement in everyone. You yourself, what poor? You are poor. All those people there, they are poor. He did not say if you are rich. So he drove sacrificed animal with him. And from Abdullah, uh, uh, etc., uh, Allah, Messenger, commanded Ahram and Umrah, etc. Okay, he's now creating, you know, and then he said, and pronounced Talbiyah for Hajj. And the people performed tamattu, enjoyment of the Hajj, in the company of Allah Messenger. They put on a haram of Umrah. I mean, what kind of translation? And then for Hajj, some of them had sacrificed animals which they had brought with them. Whereas some of them had none to sacrifice. Okay, so now some of them didn't have any sacrifice with them. Obviously, they cannot afford it. So when Allah Messenger came to Mecca, he said to the people, he amongst you who has brought sacrificed animals along with him, he must not treat as lawful anything which has become unlawful to him until it he, he completed the hajj. Like what the heck? What does this have to do with this? He should not do what is unlawful until he for, for uh, so you can do unlawful if you finish the hajj. You see the stupidity? It's like saying to you, you can't, you can't be a thief during the hajj, you can be a thief after. Uh, you cannot be a rapist during the Hajj, you can be a rapist after. And then, who amongst you has not brought sacrifice animal? Okay, what about him? He should scramble the house and run between a Safa and a Marwa and they clip his hair and put the ihram and then again on the ihram of, uh, 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 for Hajj or for a sacrifice of animal. So you have to do it still. What the point of this thing? I mean, walking around the Kaaba seven times and clip my hair and run between the Safa and Al Marwa seven times. What does that mean? What is it for? Are we doing a match for Allah? I mean, like, are we going to make a race? I, run, I need to run seven times between a Safa. What a Safa? A Safa and Al Marwa is a place where pagan Arab used to worship two idols. One for a male and one for female. Supposedly they had six inside the car. Now, I did not bring an animal with me. Why now I have to do those things? I have to circumvallate around the Kaaba, and then I have to run between a Safa and Marwa seven times, and then I have to clip my hair, and then I have to cover myself or whatever, and then I have to uh, again uh, uh, do it again and uh, uh, provide sacrifice for animal. So, all of this to to arrive to the point that we have to do what we supposedly we did not do, sacrifice animals. What is the point of this? Then he continued. But he who does not find the sacrifice animals, he should observe fast for three days. Like what? <laughs> During the hat. And for seven days when he returned to his family. Okay, so now... Muhammad saying, okay, if you are so poor, uh, you cannot afford it. Okay, well, you know what? Uh, uh, fast for three days during the Hajj and seven days when you come back. Okay, what this is about? I mean, what this is about? Well, why Why he have to do that? I mean, why sacrificing animals? Because you notice here, sacrificing animals is the most important. The reason for that because when people sacrifice animals, the business go big deal. 
people they bring goats and animals to for sacrifice in this day to make a lot of money you make a portion of money so this is a day where people they grow their animals and they will not sell them if you go in the Middle East two or three months before the day of sacrifice which can happen either after uh, uh, Adha as we said Adha yes the Muslim they say it is like after the uh, uh, certain occasion but the fact Adha they practice in every occasion they have in their life in Ramadan and what is under oh, under Hajj so they do both they do Adha they do sacrifice because Adha means sacrifice you can go right now and search how and what they do in the last day of Ramadan simply they do Adha why because Adha means sacrifice they sacrifice hundreds of thousands of animals in every city not in the country in the country millions so now here you will find Muhammad coming with rules which is stupid I mean where, where do you get this from where Allah they told you that where is the, these details coming from there's no point of it and then he says the messenger said circumlate uh, circumlate the house when he came to Mecca he first kissed the corner of the Kaaba look look we are talking about worship in one God and not to be pagan but yet we have to go between two rocks a Safa and Marwa two small hills they used to have idols on them and then we have to go around the Kaaba and we have to run around the Kaaba seven times three running and four walking Read carefully. He first kissed the corner of the Kaaba, continuing, continuing, uh, containing the black stone. So he kissed the black stone. Then he ran a three circle eight out of seven, and walked in for four circle eights. And then, when he had finished the circumambulation, he uh, uh, of, of the house observed two rakah. Now he made two balls of prayer of the stations, the, the prayer of Abraham, supposedly, or let us say the station of Abraham. Then he pronounced salam. <laughs> he says assalamu alaikum after he finished the the eight ball. Assalamu alaikum because Muslims they've been taught by Muhammad that when you there's two angels, they are in the right side and the left side of you. So you have to say assalamu alaikum. And then he says, and departed, come to a safa and run seven times between a safa and marwa. Like what? What this is about the funny they say to us we are not pagans I mean all those rituals is rituals of the Arab pagan before Islam black stone the Kaaba kissing the black stone bowing down in front of it praying around it circumlate around it and then we go to our Safa and Marwa and what is this running about I mean why you need to run run seven times are you saying that Allah will not accept you if you run one? Why you need to run anyway? I mean, how? If, what if somebody is disabled? What if somebody is in wheelchair? What he would do? Run seven times? What run seven times? Isn't it funny to see? Imagine we have two small hills and Muhammad is running between them seven times, and that is supposedly will make Allah happy. Guys, do you understand what I'm saying? How in the world that will make Allah happy if I run seven times between two points in the ground? Do do human have a brain? And what, what about why I want to go? Why seven times? I challenge the Muslim to tell me why seven times. Running on what is a safa and marwa? If we go and search in the Safa al Marwa, we will find that a Safa al Marwa, as we say, they are women and, and men who have sex together, and supposedly Allah made them rocks. And the Arab they placed them, they made an idols for them, or those rocks supposedly, which obviously they do not know the history of those rocks or those idols, so they worship them and they fabricate stories about them. The Muslims in the beginning of Islam they thought Muhammad is coming with a new religion, but the fact no. To the point, Muhammad, he have to make a chapter or verse in the Quran, forcing the Muslim to practice the pagan practice of the Arab. Inna Safa wal Marwa, min Allah, faman Hajj al Bayt, etc. Let us go and read the interpretation. He is saying to them that Safa and Marwa is from the ritual of Allah. Why was he was saying that? Because the Arab Muslims refused it in the beginning. This is because they knew this is pagan. Behold. Safa and Arwa are among the, the, the ritual of Allah. 
So those who visit the house uh, go and the compass between them around them. Why wouldn't it compass between them? Pagan. If we go to the tafsir, we will find And as you see, I don't I don't show my own. I show you exactly what is in their books. <clears throat> Read carefully with me. This verse revealed about the helpers. They used to make uh, you know Hajj to Manat, which was close to uh, uh, like an area. They also used to avoid going between as Safa and Al Marwa. So you see, Hajj was a practice of the pagan Arab. They used to do Hajj to many things. Kaaba is one of many things, and like here, they, they are doing Hajj to Manat. And then when Islam came, they asked Allah Messenger, Allah bless him and give him peace about this. Allah the Exalted is He revealed the this verse. So they ask him what we should do about al Safa and Marwa. This is narrated by Al Bukhari, and then he continues saying, "This is was revealed about a group of people from the Helper, which means the Ansar. Before Islam, they used to do Hajj to Manat, and they were forbidden from going between al Safa and Marwa. Why? Because it's simply from the pagan time. But now Muhammad, he want to make." A deal with the pagan he wants the pagan to join his religion he's doing everything he can to make the arab pagan upset, accept him as a prophet they want to, to to hajj with allah messenger allah bless him and give him peace they mentioned to him and so allah he revealed this and if you continue there it says anas ibn malik said we dislike going in between a safa and al marwa okay why you dislike because they were the shrines of Quraysh in the pre-Islamic period. So this is cl clearly proven to be a shrine, a, a pure pagan shrine of the pagan Arab before Islam. Muhammad, he copied it. And as you see, even the Muslims at the beginning, they dislike it. But Muhammad, he wanted them to continue this shrine practice, to go and visit it because he is trying to promote himself between the pagan Arab who believe that this is something holy to do so he have to make a verse saying to them oh a safa and marwa is from this the the the, the, uh, the rituals of allah you you should do it and there is no sin to do so no sin imagine which means there's no good to do so because what do you mean no sin because they thought it's a sin it's a sin to be pagan but muhammad he is a pagan and he forced them to do so then if we continue in the hadith, he said, and after that he did not treat anything as lawful, which is had become unlawful till he had completed the Hajj and sacrificed his animals in the day of sacrifice. The day of sacrifice? <laughs> in the day of sacrifice. So even the poor who cannot afford it, at the end he had to sacrifice anyway. And then went back quickly to Mecca and performed circumambulate in the house, known as Tawaful Ifada. After which, like, I mean, look at those rituals. All of those things. What is this? What is the point of this? Do I need to do all those things? You know, clip my hair, wear a and you know, like if you wear a sandal in the Hajj, the sandal have to be with from one piece. And does not have stitches. <laughs> Look like Allah would be upset if you have stitches in your sandal. I mean, this is madness. This is God. This is what God do. And yet they claim that they are not pagans, and everyone else is the pagan. When this is a pure Islamic pagan religion, if we go to Fahadi, I heard Allah Messenger as saying. So far as Laylatul Qadr, 
is concerned uh, uh, some person among you so some people asking Muhammad okay when the Quran you, you the, in the Quran you said to us that Laylatul Qadr is best of 1000 shahar which means month shahar actually is not even month it is a moon uh, if we go here let's go to Arabic Let's go maybe here better. To find it faster. All right. <clears throat> Just to show you the madness of Muhammad and how he fabricated things, none of it makes sense. In chapter 97, verse number 3, it says, Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. Okay, what does that mean? Yusuf Ali. The night of power is better than a thousand months. Okay, thank you very much. Which is not, not logical and very stupid because according to Muslims, I can show you the hadith where it says, if you pray at that night, is equal to the prayer you make in 83 years because 1000 month is 83 years you see the stupidity so now we have a night if you pray in it it's better than praying for 83 years so let us say there's a guy uh, he was praying to Islam and to Allah for the last 70 years and then I pray only that night he never prayed that night he prayed all the year except that night if I pray that night I made more than 13 years more prayer than him just because of praying that night 83 years i mean how stupid that is however muhammad he said that this night is better than a thousand night thousand month of praying now how we can find which night is this night look at this some of you are concerned about when is the date of this night of al qadr some person among you said i say uh, you know i seen, seen it in the dream some they said i think it is i saw the dream that it's in the first week some they say it is in the last week <laughs> so seek the last 10 night i mean muhammad is guessing okay some of you saw a dream that the night of the qadr is in the first week of uh, you know and then some of you they saw it in the last week okay you know what what about let us uh, Seek it in the last 10 days. Oh, this guy is guessing. How he can memorize the Quran. And then we showed you that when they asked him about when, when the Quran was revealed to you, he said, I, you know, Allah, he told me, but I saw two guys fighting and I forgot. Huh? I came out to inform you about the date of the night of Al-Qadr, but uh, so and so and so happened. And his knowledge was taken away. I forgot. I.e. I forgot how it taken. How the knowledge taken out? We have a prophet. Not only he cannot remember the Quran, he cannot even remember a date, simple date. If we continue with this madness, read here with me. You will find how the stories get it more, getting more and more funny. Uh, I ask Abu uh, Saeed. Let me see which one I will show you. Here we go. Hold on. Uh, I ask Abu Saeed, and he was a friend of mine about the night of Al Qadr, and he said. We practice at Tikaf, you know, as an illusion of most, in the middle of the third night of Ramadan, month of Ramadan, with the Prophet in the morning, in the tenth, twentieth of Ramadan. He came and addresses us, says, I was informed the date of the night of Qadr, but I was caused to forget it. <laughs> So search for it. 
uh, in the odd nights of the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. Search for it. Why Muhammad he caused to be forbidden? This is the most important night in the in the life of Muslim. This is the most important night in the in the in the prayer of Muslims in the in, in, in the history of Islam. As you see, one night is better than a thousand months of a prayer. And he was informed, informed by who? By Allah? Okay. Who is the one who caused him to forget it? Allah or Shaitan Muslims? The Muslim they say Allah. So why Allah informed him and he made him forget it? What the point? Stupid. I mean, this is stupid. Different hadith. The Muslim they keep saying to us the Quran was preserved. How we preserve the Quran? The Quran is very easy to memorize, brother. I can show you, it's a miracle. I can show you a child memorizing the Quran. It's a child. You cannot make a, a, an adult. I challenge the Muslim to show me one person who converted to Islam, he can memorize the whole Quran. As an example, Yusuf, uh, Yusuf is state. American donkey who became a Muslim. I want to see this guy reciting the whole Quran. He cannot. This is something you keep, how you practice it. You bring a child in the age of four or five years old, you beat the hell of him until he memorize and you keep beating him. Children, they can memorize any, any songs. And the other day, uh, you know, I saw a child singing a song in English in perfect accent. Even like me, I cannot sing it. But the child do not know a single English word. This is exactly what happened. They do that to children, not to adults. And look what Muhammad he said. Because when the Muslim they say memorizing the Quran is so easy, this is a, this is this is not what your prophet said. Your prophet said the Quran is the most easy words to forget. Read with me. The prophet said, read the Quran regularly by the one in whose Muhammad hand uh, Muhammad's soul is which means Allah it is it escape from the memory faster than a camel does it from tiny ropes it's very famous for the Arab that the camel because he's powerful he can cut his rope he can cut it you know you have to have a very strong rope to hold him so look how easy it is to forget the Quran even faster from a camel escaping his rope so why you lie to us? You say the Quran is easy to memorize, proving that this is from God. Muhammad himself, he forget the Quran. And by the way, the Muslim they want to say this is a daif, and this is not daif. This is not daif. This is a sahih hadith. This is a very sahih hadith, as you see. Muhammad himself forget about Al Qadr now. Muhammad, he said, I forgot the Quran. What he forgot? He forgot the Quran. Not only the night of uh, Al Qadr, I forgot the Quran. The whole Quran is forgotten. Okay. Aisha reported that the Apostle of Allah uh, listened to a recitation of the Quran by a man in the mosque. Thereupon he said, May Allah have mercy upon him. Uh, be remind me of a verses which I had been made to forget or forget. Who is the one talking? Muhammad. He forgot Quran. Uh, let us see a different one. Read this one with me. Here is not about verses, here is about chapters. Muhammad he forgot totally. Allah Messenger heard the man reciting the Quran at the night and said, May Allah bestow his mercy on him as he has remind me, reminded me of such and such verses of such and such surahs which I was caused to be forgotten. But for sure, this is uh, exposed Muhammad again to be a prophet of God. Why? Because Muhammad he himself and the Quran, he have a promise from Allah that he will give him Quran and he will never forget. If you remember, in my debate with Sheikh Rohi, I asked him about this 
he claimed that this is a weak hadith and later he come and he apologized that this hadith is not weak it's true so the Muslim have a problem now look what the Quran said We will recite the Quran for you and you will never forget it. Chapter 87, verse number 6. Okay. Allah, He said to him, and we will make it, you know, uh, uh, we will make a recite. We will make a recite. And you will never forget a single word. But how this happened then? How this happened? How Muhammad forgot the Quran? And this is a Sahih Hadith, very much Sahih. We will make a recite and you shall not forget. Recite what? Quran. How this happened? There's no explanation. We shall make thee read, what read? So you shall not forget. If read is even more horrible, did Allah make Muhammad read? So as you see, the more we dig in this Quran, the more we find that it is a madness, it's a stupid book, there's nothing there that makes sense. How Allah promised Muhammad that you will not forget the Quran, and then Muhammad proven by Muslims from the mouth of Muhammad, from the mouth of Aisha, that Muhammad forgot a lot of Quran. Look here in this hadith. Allah Apostle said, the example of a person knows the Quran by heart is like the owner of a tied camels. If he keep them tied, he will control them but if he release them they will run away <laughs> and the funny that Muhammad is comparing between the Quran and the camel makes sense I mean it really makes sense if Muhammad knew that the Quran is easy to be forgotten why you don't write a book according to hadith we know uh, uh, the story where Abdullah ibn Sarah, a person who used to be the scribe of Muhammad, Muhammad, he was reciting the chapters where he speaks that Allah is the best of the creators. In case you do not know, this verse is not the maid of Muhammad, this is the maid of a man, his name is Abdullah ibn Sarah. Muhammad was uh, speaking about the creation, how Allah created the mankind. Abdullah ibn Sarah, he said, Praise be to Allah, the best of the creators. He liked what Muhammad said. He said, Allahu ahsanul khaliqeen. This is not from Allah. This is the man, the scribe who write for Muhammad the Quran. Muhammad, he heard him. He said, what you said? The guy, he said, Allahu ahsanul khaliqeen. Muhammad, he said, okay, write it there. He said, write it where? He said, in the Quran. He said, but this, this is what I said. Muhammad, he said, it, this is how it came to me. Muhammad claimed that this is how he received the Quran. So how in the world Muhammad he says such a statement, how he copy what the scribe just said and make it Quran. And now we have in the Quran something very funny because this is exposed Muhammad to be a false messenger again. Not only because he copied what this man said, but the word says that Allah is the best of the creators. How Allah can be the best of the creators? Don't you Muslims believe in one creator? So the stupid Muhammad, because he liked the sentence, he copied it, he put it in the Quran, he destroyed his, his, his cult, he destroyed all what he said, that Allah is a one God as Muslims they claim. And now we have, so blessed be Allah, the best of the creators. You ask the Muslims how many creators we have. They will say you one. Well, who you worship, Muslims, the creator. Which one? Oh, we have one creator. Well, the Quran says he is the best of the creators. I remember once I was talking to a Muslim, he said, oh, you know, the Quran says the best of the creators, but there's no other creators. Okay. So why he's saying the best of the creators? He said here is just to say that Allah is the best of the creators. Okay, but there's no creator, which means this is a lie. If I say I am the best human between mankind and there's no mankind, that means I am a liar. I just claimed that there's other creators, but in fact, there's no others. And I made this lie up so I can praise myself and make myself the best to feel better. If there's no other creators, 
then how you can be the best of the creators? The stupid Muhammad, he liked what this guy said. He added in the Quran and he forced him to write it down. And this guy then, he decided to leave Islam. And Muhammad, he ordered him to be killed. And he is the brother of Uthman ibn Affan. He is the best of the creators. So the Muslims are worried about our book to be corrupt or not. I find that this is nothing but a hypocrisy. Your book, if you believe it's corrupt or not, it's as stupid as dumb. And you know, if I type right now in Google, just two words. Hmm? Uh, Al-Imam al please. Uh, just to show you how easy it is to find the reference you will say right away that Muslims they write books you know they have tons of websites about how many verses are gone and disappear from the Quran. And actually, you know, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, we spoke about some of it. Let me see here. Yeah. Look in this, in this, uh, in this page here. 57 report in the book of an Imam Suyuti, which is collection of many other books of the corruption of the Quran. How verses are missing, chapters are missing, hundreds of verses are missing, are gone. And no Muslim can say a word, no Muslim can say is not true. Uh, if we go to the story as an example, here, Aisha, she said that the chapter of Al-Ahzab used to be 200 verses. And when Uthman, he wrote the Mus'haf, Al-Masahif, we could not find of it except what we have now, which is what, 71, 72, 73, depending on the Quran you are reading? We have, we have a lot of verses that are missing, more than 200 verses. 213 verses. Where they go? So they are busy day and night attacking our book, but the fact all their Islamic reference prove that Islam is a stupid religion based on nothing. They have nothing. What kind of God is say The Quran, not even a single verse, brother. Not even a single verse, brother, was taken from the Quran. If we go in the Quran, we will find even the goat was able to take and eat the Quran. And now the Muslim, they don't have those verses. And this is by the witness of uh, Aisha. We will be careful here. You will find it says, the verse of a stoning and breastfeeding for adult. The Muslim, they have something that's called a breastfeeding for adult. A Muslim woman, she can give her boobs to a stranger so he can suck it. And this is a ritual of Islam to make you more friendly. Look how stupid this cult is. We cannot shake hands with them, but we can suck their nipples. The verse of stoning of a, and, and the breastfeeding of an adult, 10 times was revealed. So this was a verse. There was a verse in the Quran that a man and a woman, he can suck the nipples on the breast of a woman 10 different times until he is satisfied. And this is a verse in the Quran, not hadith. It was revealed, as you see. And the paper was with me under my pillow when the messenger of Allah died. We were preoccupied with his death. And a tame sheep came and ate it. Even a goat can destroy the Quran. Okay, where we can find those verses now? Is this hadith weak? No. No, it's not. And the funny here it says, these verses were abrogated in recitation, but not in ruling. <laughs> what abrogated? It says there that the goat ate them. Not in ruling. And it says, 
abrogate a recitation by verses to do it five times. You see here? Five times. Okay, show me the verse in the Quran says you can do five times breastfeeding. I want to see the verse. We can't find it. So the abrogated and the abrogation are not exist. Stoning to death is not exist. A Suyuta report, 57 report of hundreds and thousands of verses are missing from the Quran. What do you say, Muslim? All those, all those reference, all those. Look, look, look how many. Look, 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 look. Look, 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 look. Look, 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 how many books? Look, 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 how many reference? Oh, unbelievable. Chapters after chapters after chapter are gone. They are history. We cannot find them. And nobody can find them. What we will do now? Get a new Quran or get a new prophet? Yeah, we got Mirza Ghulam. Mirza Ghulam, who claimed to be the Messiah. When the Christian they, they brought him a bunch of Christians who they have in this they have this ability and blind men and women, he said, I cannot do it. He claimed to be the Messiah, but he can recover anyone, for he is a scumbag. It's very funny and very stupid religion. And you have to be really stupid to the point you don't want to see how stupid this cult is. Not to mention the history uh, error, uh, historian errors, uh, uh, or, or historic errors, uh, science errors. You can go and read my books. You know, go and get my books about about the Quran from Amazon.com. Just type Christian Prince. Depend in the Amazon you are reading. Uh, you have like Amazon.de, Amazon France, Amazon.com. Just type Christian Prince and you will see a lot of reference about a lot of, of, of my books written in many languages. Uh, get your copy and, you know, read, educate yourself. Get a handy uh, document in your hand. Anytime you need it at home, you can give reference to whoever you wish. Islam is the most stupid religion and there's no question about that. And when the Muslims, they question our Bible, they are questioning their own, not ours. Because all of Islam is based on Christianity and Judaism and some other false gods. The Quran says it clearly that Muhammad, he sent Muhammad, or Allah, he sent Allah, which means Muhammad sent Muhammad. I, I think you get what I'm saying. Making it clear that the Quran, witnessing that the book of Jesus was with the Christians, which means the teaching of Jesus. If we type the word Musaddiqan, وَآمِنُوا بِمَا أَنزَلْتَ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ Go down. مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ Which means, if we click a translation here, just to show you the same sentence, مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ I want you to search for the same sentence, exactly, just to show you the hypocrisy of the Muslim when they translate. So here, chapter 2, verse, one, uh, verse number 41, translation. Confirm a revelation which, which is with you. Which is with you. Okay, why why here it says confirm a revelation which is with you? <clears throat> the same sentence, the same verse, exactly in different locations of the Quran, the Muslim they translate it as confirming what is used to be with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, when when uh, 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 when the Muslim try to lie in translation, sometimes they think that people are a bunch of stupid, and nobody want to use his brain. You can copy. You see, if I search now for the same sentence, let me do so. Okay, just to show you, I will go down. Uh, actually, I'm going to search for the same verse first. Let us search for the same exact. Hmm. So now we have <clears throat> 11 verses, 11 verses having the same thing. Oh, let me, no, hold on. 
let me let me put the whole thing here. Let's see. I hope the search engine will help. Two verses at least here. Same sentence. وَآمِنُوا بِمَا أَنزَلْتُ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ Okay. And believe in what I sent, confirming what is with you. Chapter 2, verse 41, we showed you this one. And then, chapter 4, verse number 47. Read carefully. It's exactly the same as the one we have it there. If we go down, مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ the difference between this sentence and the sentence before, it is just in, instead of saying ma'ahum, here ma'akum. Actually, it's the same. Musaddiqan lima ma'akum, sorry. It's exactly the same. Musaddiqan lima ma'akum, here. Musaddiqan lima ma'akum. Exactly. If we go and read the translation, you will see the translation change. Confirming what you used to have with you. But does it say that? It says confirming what is with you. Oh, you people of the book, believe in what we have now revealed, confirming what was already with you. Have you ever heard of such an English? It was already with you? It doesn't say that. The same sentence appear in the other verse, as you see. You can take a snapshot of my screen just to show you we are not changing the sentence. It's the same sentence. Here we go. This is the sentence. مصدقاً لما معكم. Three words. Take a snapshot now. Just do it. You can take you can take a picture with your phone, or a screen. If you are watching your phone, you can take a screen uh, 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 saving. Now we go to the verse before it. It's exactly the same. Here we go. مصدقاً لما معكم. Exactly, word by word. Let us read translation. Chapter 2, verse number 41. It says, confirming which is with you. Do you see it? Why they are changing here? That verse is not about disapproving Muhammad or approving, etc. This is a revelation speaking about something happened before Muhammad time. So now we can be honest in the translation. But the other verse is confirming the book of the Christians and the Jews. If we go in different verse in the Quran, and we showed you this one already. In chapter 2, verse number 289, it's, uh, verse number 89, it says, It's exactly as the verse before. The difference is here, instead of saying here, it says uh, uh, with them. It's the same word actually, but like the way you say it, or with them or with you. This is the whole different with them or with you, confirming what is with them. Let us read translation, chapter 2, verse number 89. And then when there come to them, the book from Allah confirming what is with them. How you can confirm what is with them? Every every sign, every you know, every reference in the Quran proving that Islam is a stupid religion, and the Muslims they lie to us when they try to explain or translate. It's contained tons of verses in the Quran saying that it is confirming what is with you in Arabic. If we go in the English translation, we will find that the translation change because they are not honest. What? Approving what they possess, what they have in their hands. 291, look how many in the same chapter. Hmm? Do you see it? Even if it is be truth, confirming what is with them. 
But here the translation is kind of honest because here they are not talking about Muhammad, they are talking about Musa. <clears throat> so as long as we are talking about Musa, this is something happened before Musa. Okay, Musa is confirming. Abraham confirming. Jesus confirmed what is behind him. But Muhammad should not confirm. But we find in the Quran that even Muhammad confirming what is with them. Even Muhammad in the hadith. It says that he took oath on the Torah, saying, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. In chapter 2, verse number 101, it says, The same. It's all over the Quran. I will change that, you know, just to show you how many times the Quran repeat the same story with different sentence. قل من كان عدوا لجبريل فإنه نزله على قلبك بإذن الله مصدقا لما بين يدي ما بين يدي. If you read the translation. What is between his hands? Let us go and see a translation. You will see how the Muslim play with the translation. Say, whoever is the enemy of Jibreel, for he is a bring down the revelation to the heart by Allah. Uh, 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 well, a confirmation of what went before it. Before it doesn't say that. It says what is between his hands. I mean, they don't have dignity. The purpose of those false translation is to defend Islam. Translation. This is chapter 3, verse number 3. And suppose this chapter is speaking about Jesus. Chapter 3, verse number 3. Supposedly, you know, okay. Uh, he sent in the truth the book confirming what went before it. It doesn't say that. Where it says what went before it, it says what is between his hands. You know, so you cannot trust really anything those people they say. They are a bunch of liars and they have no dignity. Here it says the same. Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi. The same sentence. But this one, speaking about Jesus, Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi. Read that to you. And then we send after that Isa. Ibn Maryam, son of Mary, Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi. Read carefully with me. You see, you do not need to speak Arabic to know. Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi. The same exact sentence. If we click here in the translation, you will see the translation should come honest. Why? Because it says, because this is about Jesus, not about Muhammad. So the Muslim, they don't need to play with it because, okay, Jesus is approving what he have between his hand, between the Torah. But when it's come about Muhammad, the same exact sentence they changed the meaning and they changed the translation because that will get the Muslim busted accusing the Bible to be corrupt. If we click here at translation, chapter 5, verse number 46. Yusuf Ali. Then it says, and we send in their footstep, we send Jesus, son of Mary, confirming the law that had come before him. He's confirming it. But even here, by the way, translation is not honest because not came before him. It, it between his hand, what is between his hand? You can copy the text as it is and put it in Google translation and you will see this what is meant. Madness, stupidity, dishonesty. This is why you cannot learn Islam from the translation made by Muslims. And we cause Jesus, son of Mary, to the, the first steps, confirming which was revealed before him. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مُصَدِّقًا And actually this one is more horrible because after that it says وَمُهَيْمًا عَلَيْهِ So Allah says supposedly that the Bible is protected by the Quran And protected by Allah, chapter 5, verse number 48. Read carefully. Read Allah. 
To thee we send the scriptures and truth, confirming the scriptures that came before it. Okay, how you can confirm it? I, I thought it's corrupt. And then guarding it in safety. Okay, so now it's guarded in safety. So it's guarding the scriptures came before it, uh, which is between his hands. And guarding it. How it's guarding it? You are saying to me it's corrupt. Somebody tell the donkey Shabir Ali how the Quran is saying that Allah guarding the scriptures came before it, and you are, you are saying to me that it's corrupt. So we can continue like this forever, but however, remember at the end of the day, if a Muslim says to you something about the Bible is corrupt, don't say to him, it is not. Answer him as the following. You mean the Bible of Allah. Because the Quran confirmed that this is the book of Allah, and they, therefore, I have nothing to do with it. The Muslim is talking about, obviously, a book had nothing to do with our book. If we type the word Injil, we will find all those verses speaking of the Injil and the Torah, chapter 5, verse number 46, chapter 5, verse number 47, chapter uh, uh, 48, verse number 29, uh, chapter 57, verse 27, etc. All those verses confirming one thing, that the Injil, which means the Gospel, and the Torah, which is the book of Moses, are sent by Allah. So what is my problem? You Muslims are a bunch of idiots who keep saying to us that Allah he sent books and he could not protect them. That is your problem and that is something against your God, not my God. Your God sent books he can protect. How we can trust him. Your God. And look here at this stupid verse. In chapter 5 verse number 47 Allah is asking us even to practice the Bible, how we can practice something we don't have. As Muslims claim, let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah revealed to their end. Okay, how they can be judged if the book is gone? So all the verses in the Quran is speaking of one thing, that the Bible never been corrupt. The Muslim, they will say to you, no, there is a verse in the Quran saying the following. How you explain to me this verse? That's what the Muslim they will say. Min al hadu yuharifun al kalam al mawadi. From some of the Jews, they change, or the Jews from the Jews, there is some they change, or they change the location of the words. And the story says what? The story says that a guy who Muhammad was, uh, he was asking Muhammad about uh, the punishment of uh, adultery. He put his finger over the verse hiding the verse where it says stone them and this is what they call it corruption he did not corrupt anything he just put his finger on the top of it in arabic here says you have al kalim al muwadihi if we see that interpretation we will find that they change the mean of the verse not changing the verse they are not honest with the mean the same as the muslim do chapter 4 verse number 46 we can go right now and see in the interpretation and you will see it says that by changing the meaning of the verse. And here it says the same. And here it says the same. Now, if it change in words from their location, remember, it doesn't if the Muslim they want to take it literate way that you change the words from their location that will be a corruption that means the Quran is corrupt because according to Muslims the Quran we have today is not according to the revelation as an example the first chapter Muhammad he received it is a chapter 97 which means exists in the Quran today in a chapter num number 97 but in fact it should be the verse number one so if it change in the location of verses is a corruption that means all of Islam is based on the corrupt Quran for the Muslims are the first to change the location of verses not us so if they will take it literate way that will be against the Quran if they want to take it in a metaphorical way which means the meaning that will be against the Quran too 
because the Quran, Muslims, they give tons of meaning for the Quran. At the end of every interpretation, they will say to you, Allah knows best. And not only that, the Quran itself, it says, witness that nobody knows what the Quran means, save Allah. Nobody knows most of the Quran meaning, save Allah. So how we can follow such a book? What the point of sending a book? Nobody knows what it means, save Allah. That is the most stupid statement ever. But it can be explained easy. Muhammad is a false prophet. He do not know how to explain what he stole. He found a book. It's called the Book of Warqam and Nufal. He do not know how to explain it. So the one people they ask, no idea what to say. For this is not his words, and he is not the author. But no one knows. It is hiding meaning except Allah. Have you ever heard of a stupid cult, stupid religion like this? Nobody knows the meaning of the Quran, save Allah. Which ones are the verses nobody knows their meaning save Allah? Nobody knows too. I mean, why Allah don't put them in the, all the verses which nobody knows their meaning save Allah in one book? How we will know now? The Quran explained, uh, those who have a sickness in their heart, they will use them in the wrong way. Ah, so Allah the devil, he made verses, nobody knows what they mean, so people, they can play around with the Quran. This is what he's saying. The Quran is a book of deception. If you follow the Quran, you will be deceived. <coughs> My friend, read carefully. It says that some verses are the foundation of the book, which means those are clear. And I change any Muslim to show me one clear verse. Even the verse, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, and the clear. Because how Allah says in the name of Allah. How Allah he says in... Uh, in uh, 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 you know, give us guidance. Allah saying, give us guidance. <coughs> and then he says that there's a part of it, those who have illness in their heart, they will use it, and nobody knows their meaning, save Allah. So Allah, he made the Quran, and the purpose of it, so those who they are bad, they can use it to deceive you. But that means it's not deceived, it's not, it's not guide. The Quran itself as a book, if you follow it, you will be misguided. This is what the verse is saying to us. There is verse in the Quran, nobody knows what they mean. And the purpose of them, to be used by the bad ones so they can deceive as many as they can. I mean, how evil this plan is. So he sent us verses in order to deceive us. <clears throat> I have to apologize, guys. I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> uh, I spoke for long. Uh, today, so I want to say thank you for being here, and I hope that Abdul, who keeps saying our book is corrupt, they can provide us with the original book, Abdul. I mean, come on, how you know our book is corrupt if you don't have one page of our book? How is stupid to say so? I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you, and I hope to see you soon again. And uh, I pray that everybody will see the truth, and the truth will set you free. Christ is Lord and Islam is false and see you soon again and I'm a Christian Prince and I love you all and may the Lord bless you in your life and with your family thank you take care bye bye